Do you have an existing power wall system and you want to add an additional battery? In this video, we're going to go through helpful tips of things you should know before adding another Tesla power wall to your existing system. Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Sicari, founder at New York State Solar Farm. Welcome back to the powerhouse. This is my home. What I like to do is always test things out at my place, the powerhouse, before offering it to customers. So we have a lot of different things here going on. We have our span panel. We have four Tesla power walls. But up until, I would say, a month and a half ago, I only had three Tesla power walls. And in this video, I wanted to go through some things to know when adding a Tesla Powerwall to an existing system. We have customers call our office all the time, and we're actually going through this right now with a handful of them, where they have one Powerwall in place already, and they want to add another one. And there's some things just through my experience that I've learned that you have to identify. Is your home set up with Powerwalls full home backup, or do you have partial home backup? Now, what's the difference? My home is set up with full home backup, which means everything in our service panel is fully backed up. So in the event of a power outage, everything is on. And how do I manage that? If I need to continue um, and get more power out of the batteries for a longer period of time, I start shutting loads down. If you don't have a span panel, you could shut them down manually. If you have a span panel, you could set that all up internally to throttle down loads and shut them off based upon what you need as your essential loads. Now, if your home is set up with a power wall on a secure loads panel, that means out of all the circuits in your home, let's just say you only have your heat, your refrigerator, um, some essential loads on that secure panel. So usually you have a sub panel of secure loads and those things are tied to your power wall. So let's just go through the first scenario. In this case, it's a lot easier to add a power wall, depending on the situation, but in my experience, it's easier to, to add a power wall to a home that's already set up with full home backup. Um, and it usually happens a lot more of the time that you wind up adding a power wall in that scenario. But it does happen. We have a customer in Stone Ridge that we added an additional power wall to their secure loads because they were just in outage situations, uh, just, just blowing through that battery uh, too quickly because they had their heat on it and a lot of other things. Uh, so some of the things to be aware of are uh, in this scenario where we added this fourth power wall. When you add a fourth power wall, you have to have conduit going to it. So do you have adequate space to have the conduit going into the power wall? In this case, I've this was one of our first power wall systems. Uh, so we did, we had this trough underneath it. So we're able to have the conduit and each power wall is on a 30 amp breaker. So the next thing was, do we have enough space for our 30 amp breaker? And, and we did. So there was no issues with adding a 30 amp breaker for our Tesla power wall. So we have one, two, three, four breakers uh, for each of them. Uh, so that wasn't an issue, but in some cases you would have to upgrade uh, your panel to add um, an additional breaker spot for the power wall. So that was something to consider. Uh, luckily we had enough space here, so we're able to get that power wall. The other thing to know is why are you wanting to add an additional power wall to your system? For me, I have everything in our home running off electric besides our hot water. The last thing to change over is our hot water, but there's a new furnace in the house, so we're gonna keep it uh, until it breaks down and then swap that out for a heat pump. But if you have, um, I, I needed that extra, uh, that extra storage capacity. So right now, each power wall is 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage, 13.5, 13.5. So now we're at our fourth power wall, which gives us a total backup storage of 54 kilowatt hours of backup storage here. Um, that sounds like a good amount. That is a good amount. Uh, I can't wait for a vehicle to home 
charging because when you think about it, your Tesla Model 3, your Tesla Model Y, or your Ford Lightning has 130 kilowatt hour battery packs. So when we're able to get cars to charge homes in outage situations, that's gonna be, it's starting to happen, but when it's massively adopted, it's gonna be a game changer. So uh, I needed the backup storage here, just that additional for the heat pumps um, in, a, in a blackout situation. Also, the reason I did it and what pushed me a little quicker to do it was the Powerwall 2 was getting discontinued. So we're like, all right, while we still have it, let's add another one. And we had a perfect space here for it. Uh, I actually, when we installed this system, you know, it took probably two days to get this whole system up. To install this Tesla Powerwall and add this one onto our system, maybe took two hours. Uh, the hardest part was probably getting it down the bill code door steps and adding that additional power wall to the system was not a problem at all. It definitely was a lot easier than the initial install because during the initial install, you're having to set up the gateway and all those other things. The other thing on our system that I still have to do is this is the original Tesla gateway one. Um, you can see here on this system, this is now our main breaker for the panel. So uh, if I flip this breaker, everything in the home is going to be running off the Tesla Powerwall. So when we flip the main breaker, the transition from light from over to batteries, you could see right now, that was it. So that little flicker was everything now is running off of the batteries and the entire home is being run off of the Powerwalls. Why did I show you this? I showed you this because we actually have to upgrade this. Um, I don't wanna misspeak. I don't have all the details on it right now, but due to the amount of panels we have and the amount of power walls we have, um, it's best if we upgrade this because there's internal components on this system um, that need to be upgraded to be adequate for the addition of the fourth power wall as well as the addition of extra solar that we put on the roof. There's gonna be a separate video on that um, because we're gonna do the installation of the Tesla Gateway 2. Also, I wanna have the most updated equipment because we do a lot of testing here and the vehicle to home charging is coming out. So we're gonna have the ability to use the universal Tesla wall connector, plug that into the Cybertruck so that we would have 130 kilowatt hours of storage from the Cybertruck on top of the additional 54 kilowatt hours of storage that we have here in the basement of the powerhouse. So the other thing to consider is we just talked about full home backup. It's a lot easier to add a battery to full home backup. The other thing to consider is if you're doing full home backup, and let's just say in this case scenario, I added a fourth power wall, but I only had let's just say 10 solar panels on the roof, you have to understand that if you only have 10 solar panels on the roof, but you need to back up, you need enough power in a grid outage to support 54 kilowatt hours of storage to back up these batteries, you're not gonna have enough. So knowing how much solar is on your roof to charge the batteries is the other thing that's critically important. Now for this customer we're working on right now, she has one battery, uh, I believe she has around 20 panels on her system and we're gonna add a second battery onto it. So in that situation, we're adding the second battery and the thing that's really helpful is the customer is very knowledgeable. They said, listen, I don't care um, if there's enough solar to feed the batteries in an outage. I just know when we have the outage, my outages are only uh, 24 hours and I just need that extra battery to get me through uh, that period when we have the outage. So having knowledgeable customers that know what's going on and how these things work is really important, especially in outage situations. But if you had a system that was just a secure loads panel, you would really have to go through the same sequence that we did before. Do you have enough room in the combiner panel? Do you have enough solar to feed the power walls in the event of an outage? Um, if you don't, are you aware of that so you understand that in the event of an outage, I'm only basically gonna be able to have what's in my batteries and a little solar trickling in to fill the batteries, um, but it's probably not gonna be enough to go long, long term. So 
knowing those different variables is really important to make a knowledgeable decision of should you add an additional power wall to your system and is it worth it? And I think that's up to every homeowner and what they're going through. In our situation with heat pumps, with electric vehicle charging, with everything we have going on, it makes sense for, for us to get that an additional 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, also, why it makes sense is because when we have an outage, outages usually last for longer than a couple hours. So to have that backup storage for um, to go a little longer term is important. So how can you get more out of your power walls is by sh load management. So if you have a blackout situation and you want to get more out of the power wall, shutting down some of the loads in your panel to make uh, your system last longer uh, in that outage is really important. But I hope this video was helpful in going through some helpful tips of things to know when adding a power wall to your system. And one of the key things is, do you have space in the panel? Do you have enough solar to support it? Um, and do you know these things before, before getting into it? So thanks for tuning in and signing out at the powerhouse.